What's going on guys? Vig BB back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, we're going to be doing some tips and tricks for your Amberdeck RG35XX SP. Let's get to it. All right, you know the drill. If you're not following me on all the socials, what are you waiting for? Be sure to follow me at Vic underscore VP. Also click that link tree down below. You'll get all the socials, Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube. Be sure to like, subscribe, and comment down below. Did you get one of these after my review? Let me know. I'm interested to hear about if you got it and your opinions on it. All right, so we're going to get right into it. The first tip, which a lot of people want to know, is how do you do the PSP axis swap? Basically making the D-pad and the analog stick work with the press of a button. We're going to go into RA game. We're going to go into SD card one. I'm going to do that because I want to launch Grand Theft Auto. And we're going to go in and launch Grand Theft Auto Vice City Stories. Again, now, if you really think about it, you have to press this button to swap from D-pad to analog stick. And GTA right now off the top of my head is a great game to demonstrate that. So the game's loaded. We're going to hit the menu button. You're now going to get the PPSSPP game menu. Okay. We're going to go into game settings. So by that, we have to press the B button, which is like the X. And we're going to go down to controls. We're going to go down to control mapping. And on the right, we have the mapping. We're going to go all the way down, not all the way down, but we're going to find the option that says axis swap right here. So on yours, it's going to be blank. You're going to hit the, pl the plus button. And I advise to do it as R2. That's it. You are set. If you press now the A button, that'll bring it back. You press the A button. Now, if you press the B button, that's continue. So that's X. That is it. You are set. So every time you hit that R2, it's going to do the axis swap, as you can see there. Again, a great game to show that off is GTA. Right when it starts, you're not going to be able to move your character. But if you do axis swap, you should have control. I'm going to do it with you guys just to show you that it does work. Again, it doesn't come stock out of the box like that. But as you can see, most of these tips and tricks are gonna be pretty quick and easy. So right now I have access swap. Right now I, had, I pressed it, I can't move. That's how the game usually starts. But now with R2, I have the option for access swap. Tip one, down. Now the next tip, I did mention a lot in my reviews. We're gonna talk about retro achievements. Yes, I love retro achievements. I think it's awesome. I think everybody should have it. It's kind of a two-step thing. Number one, you have to go on your computer, go to retroachievements.org and sign up for an account. I recommend that you make your password kind of short and easy uh, and you make a username. Your username is like global, so try to you know keep it cool. Uh, once you get that done, you're going to go to your device. You do need Wi-Fi enabled for retro achievements. So go into your network settings and then configure and set up your Wi-Fi. You're going to go back here. We're still inside of settings. We're going to go into retro arc settings and we're going to start retro arc. Yes. Yes. So like I mentioned in my review video, achievements isn't even visible out of the box. I'm not sure why, but we're going to make it visible. So again, we are in retro arc main menu. We're going to go left. We're going to go to settings. We're going to go to user interface. We're going to go to menu item visibility settings. If we go up, you're going to see there show achievements. We're going to go to the right and now it is on and visible. So now if I go down into settings, I should see the achievements option. So again, now we're going to go in and log in to our retro achievements before this wasn't visible and now it is. So we can go into your achievements, set it to on. You're going to go into your, your username. You'll be the, the keyboard should pop up. You can type in your username and you can type in your password. You can do a couple of things here. I personally don't set hardcore, hardcore mode on because I kind of cheat and I load save states, but you could toggle that on and off. But at least now your achievements are set. We're going to go back before we exit. We're not done yet. We have to go into main menu, configuration file, and then save current configuration. It's very important to do that here. This way it goes globally for all the emulators. Now, keep in mind, like I mentioned in the review, not every single game has retro achievements. I've loaded up some games, so you can see there I could go to the left. I'm still in RetroArch. I didn't exit. There is a history option there. So, for example, if I go to Adam's Family and I run that, 
you're going to see there, see retro achievements logged in. That means we're all good. And as you can see on the top left, this game does have achievements. All good to go. If you're not getting that, then possibly you entered your username wrong or your password. Tip number two, done. Now, tip number three, we're going to be talking about the rumble function. Now, I haven't totally kind of figured this out or tested this. I mentioned in my video that I launched my games in RA game, which is RetroArch. Game rooms, I'm not sure if Rumble is configured. We could always test that later on, but let's do the tutorial part. We're gonna right now enable Rumble. The big thing though is that we have to enable Rumble per emulator. So the first one we're gonna do is Game Boy Advance. Yes, Game Boy Advance had a Rumble function. So we're gonna go into Game Boy Advance and we're gonna launch a Game Boy game. It doesn't really matter right now. We could do this Ace Combat. Uh, again, this is because I launch in RA game. This doesn't have any achievements. That's fine. I'm going to go into menu. So I'm going to press the menu button. We're going to go into core options. We're going to go into input and auxiliary devices. And you can see there at the bottom, Game Boy Player Rumble. We're going to want that on. This does require a restart. That's why it says restart. What's great with this though is that when you exit, it automatically saves your override. So I can now close content. And now Game Boy Advance is set for Rumble. Now the one game in Game Boy Advance that worked with the Rumble was called like Driller. Um, but just for kicks, I'm just gonna launch Dead to Rights and we're just gonna make sure that the setting stuck, which it should. So again, if I go to Menu, I'm gonna go to Core Options, I'm gonna go to Input and Auxiliary. As you can see, Rumble is there. Uh, so again, that's Game Boy Advance. The other emulators you have to do is like N64, I don't think Game Boy Color, uh, PS1, and um, that was really it, to be honest. The main thing though was Game Boy Advance. That's really where I noticed the rumble on it. Uh, while, I guys, while I have you guys here, let's take a look real quick together. Uh, we'll do N64 for the next one. So you can launch an N64 game. Doesn't really matter any game. I right now have my rumble on, but we're gonna press menu. We're gonna go to core options. And your option is probably like this, player one pack memory. You just gotta move it over to the right, set it to rumble, and you are done. Again, RetroArch, it saves the content, it saves the configuration file when you close. That right now, we just set up N64, awesome. Let's real quick, we're gonna run PSP, uh, I'm sorry, PS1. PSP is already like it's a separate emulator, there's no RetroArch for that, so it should be a-okay. So we're going to go now, I'm still in SD card one, PlayStation one, Alien Trilogy, uh, and I just saw a Dreamcast, I believe we have to do Dreamcast two. Going to hit the menu button, core options, uh, input, rumble effects. Yours may be off, you're going to want to send that to on. Again, same thing, quick menu and close content, we're good to go. Let's check out the Dreamcast real quick. I'm gonna launch a random Dreamcast game. I'm gonna press my menu button. I'm gonna do core. Again, most of this stuff is inside of this core uh, section. So let's see, do I see anything about rumble, region, input, gun crosshairs, vibration pack. There you go. Enable force feedback. Yours may be off. I have it on. Bring it back. Close content. Awesome. Now, real quick, just for kicks, I'm not going to end it. Um, I'm going to launch. I'm going to actually look for this Driller game from the Game Boy Advance. And I'm going to launch it from Game Rooms to see if Rumble... I believe I've seen Rumble as an option. So, again, I'm going to go back. I'm going to go into Game Rooms. Uh, oh, actually, I'm not going to go into Game Rooms. I'm going to go into Search. So, the game is Drill Dozer. Let me not get that confused. It's Drill Dozer. So if I do Drill Dozer, again, that regular, nothing written next to GBA, this is the um, Game Rooms emulation. I'm going to hit the menu button. And like you see here, like I don't have the option for Rumble. I've seen like one time there was something in that quick menu option for Rumble. Um, just for kicks, I'm going to let this go. And I will update you and let you know if there's any rumble on this. Oh, there it was. It said rumble on, but that's the game setting. So hold on. I'll let you know if it rumbles. So I'm getting through this intro. My console, my unit should have rumbled several times and it hasn't. So in game rooms, it looks like 
Rumble is not active, another reason why you would want to launch from RetroArch. Again, this like segment right here, my controller should be rumbling, and it's not. So there you go. Give another plus one for launching in RetroArch. Those are the main tips I wanted to go over. I'm pretty sure this video is going to be short. So I will show you how to add ROMs to your existing SD card. I'm not going to show you where or how to get the ROMs, but let me show you how to at least put them into your folder. So number one, off the bat, you want to make sure that your Ambernic device is off. You could pick one SD card. doesn't really matter. Again, I have the double SD card option. I'm going to take the, I don't know, I'll take the one, make sure the unit's off totally. I'm going to take the 128 gig SD card. You do need a computer for this. I'm going to now grab like a micro SD card USB reader and uh, I'll show you what to do. Now, like I mentioned before, I am an arcade builder, so ROMs are a thing that I have. On the right side here, I have my ROMs folder. The left side here is the actual SD card, okay? Big thing is that you're going to see a folder called ROMs, R-O-M-S. That's the main folder. That's the only folder we're going to focus on, okay? You're going to see your consoles here. Again, this is SD card 2. Now, you might be looking for a certain console. Let's just say the SNES, the Super Nintendo, uh, which is usually SNES. And as you can see here, it's not here. So SNES and the NES is really Famicom and Super Famicom. So that is SFC. As you can see here, we have the Super Nintendo ROMs here. Now again, this is SD card 2. I mentioned in my original video, the review, you have files here that are like 001. I don't like the naming of it. I'm going to wind up removing all their ROMs and just fixing it and putting it on my my own ROMs. Now, the one thing I'm really going to do is I'm going to put like all SNES games on one SD card. This way I don't have to juggle between which SD card has what. So the main thing you want to see here is that if you go to a file and you right click and go to properties, you could see the file extension. As you can see here, this one is SMC. Now, I just now did some investigating and if I went into like the NES, they actually have games zipped. So to try this out, I would rather have my game zipped because then I could put more games. To try this out, I went into my ROM folders, my personal ROMs, and uh, I'm going to put this Mario is missing. And I'm going to throw that in to the SFC. Again, that's the Super Famicom. So I have right now Mario is missing. I'm going to leave that zipped. Essentially, you do the same process, but I want to real quick put the SD card back in the device and let's see, do we have Mario is missing? Uh, if it is there, then that means awesome stuff. We could put zip files and we're good to go. All right, so I took the SD card out of the computer. I put it in the Amernic and then I powered on. So don't power on until you get everything in. It's all booted. We have the game capture. I'm going to go into search and just to make my life easy, we're going to go and look for missing. Again, the game, the ROM I put in is Mario is Missing. And we're going to see, do we have this ROM? Again, this is a zipped ROM. I see it. You can see there's Super Famicom. So SFC with either RetroArch. I'm going to launch this. And we're going to see. I'm going to be excited if this launches zip files, which I think it should. We're good. There you go. Awesome. So you don't have to worry about the actual extension of the ROM. That's solid. That's awesome. So like I mentioned before in my review, I did add for the NES Mario Bros. 1, 2, 3. Um, and then Super Nintendo, I did All-Stars and Mario Kart. Awesome. Very exciting stuff. I'm just, I'm happy it works. Now, the one quick thing, if you do notice, you can see there on the right side, we have artwork. Um, I don't know if you saw, but I will flash back to my desktop. You can see here, like Mario is missing. I don't have artwork for that. And I also don't have artwork for other games. In that ROMs folder inside that system, which again, this is SFC, there was a, a folder at the top that was IMG, and it looks like you could put images there. So let's just, let me bring you to my desktop. So we're back on the desktop, the SD card back in. Like I mentioned before, if you go to your ROMs folder on your SD card and you go into a console, at the top here is an IMGS folder. Let's take a look at what, see Ninja Gaiden has an actual like, I guess you could call it box art. The main thing is that you need this file to match the same way it's written for the ROM. So if I was going to put a Mario is missing, 
Uh, this might be convenient if you have like a launch box build and all that. You might be able to put like the clear logos and stuff. You just want to make sure that it will match this name here. So again, if you want to, you know, piecemeal it, you got to copy and paste it. But I'm very excited to see right now zipped ROMs. You don't need this SMC style. You could do zipped ROMs and it does work. Awesome. Well, there you guys have it. VicVP Game Case Arcades. I hope these tips helped you out and made your Amberdick device more enjoyable. See you on the next one.